that's not the song of others, the love is not self-seeking. Um, if you can turn your Bibles to John chapter 21, verses from 15 to 19. John chapter um, 21, verses 15 to 19. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said, follow me. You see, in these four verses, uh, we see a beautiful conversation between Jesus and Peter. Uh, Peter was a disciple who earlier, during the trial and crucifixion of Jesus, denies him two times, just as Christ said he would. In fact, Peter was so scared that a teenage girl made him deny Christ when, when the girl asked him if he was a follower of Christ. And in these four verses, we see Christ asking Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you truly love me? Peter, do you love me? In fact, John, the writer of the gospel says, uh, Peter was hurt that Jesus asked him so many times if he loved him. And he responds by saying, Lord, you know I love you. You know I love you and you know all things, you know that I love you. And Jesus responds in a very interesting way. Jesus says, do something. You see, Jesus calls Peter to action. Um, love, according to the Bible, is not just a mental and emotional concept. Um, it is meant to translate into action and service towards God and men. Uh, Romans 5.8 says this, But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God's love is always accompanied by action. And in this case, Jesus tells Peter, feed my lambs. He tells him to feed my sheep. Very simply, Peter has been called to be a pastor um, and to shepherd the very people that Christ died for and to teach them and to pray for them and to care for them and to serve them. You see, when Peter denied Christ, he was self-seeking. He was more worried about his own safety rather than standing up for Christ. But despite his denial, Christ comes to him he cooks him breakfast, and he publicly in front of other disciples reinstates Peter as the leader of the church. In other words, Jesus restores Peter's honor. And it's amazing how the seeds of the early church were sown on a seaside over breakfast cooked by Jesus. And that's really the crux of our faith. That being a Christian is being in close fellowship with God and your fellow men and serving them with love, the same love that Christ demonstrated on the cross. And you see that Peter was a changed man after this experience. No more was he timid, no more was he self-seeking. In fact, Jesus tells him in verse 19, and it's a very interesting job description, you know, he denies Christ and Jesus tells him exactly how Peter will die. And history tells us that Peter was actually crucified upside down. He lived his life in service to the sheep that Christ asked him to feed, and his death brought glory to God. Today, Christ is telling each one of us, do something, do something for God, do something for his kingdom. Peter's calling was to feed God's sheep. Today, what is your calling and where and how is God asking us to serve? With that said, I'd like to tell